All right, we're going to get started. What an awesome uh, group of people we got here. Welcome. I think I shook most of your hands. If I didn't, I apologize, but I hope you guys have an enjoyable night tonight. And thanks for coming to our first annual combined uh, Spanish Fork Fire and EMS Awards Banquet. It's great to see all of you again, and, and we're here that are here to celebrate our accomplishments and uh, this, that we've had this past year to honor those that are receiving awards and also recognize uh, one retirement that we have amongst us this evening. We will start off this evening's event by having uh, an opening prayer by Firefighter Brandon Hawkins and then a Pledge of Allegiance followed by that by Firefighter Eric Nilsson. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for a chance to be together, brothers and sisters, and we thank you for the opportunity to serve the community. This time, we ask a blessing to watch over us, to protect us, to be able to serve those around us to the best of our abilities as we continue to grow and strengthen our relationships and unity. Please bless the food that, this night that uh, gives us our strength that we need. In these things, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Audience, please rise. Those that are in uniform and any of the, you that have served in the armed forces may salute. The rest, put your hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Thanks, Brandon and uh, Eric, for, for doing that for us tonight. I want to take a moment and uh, recognize a few of our distinguished guests that we have among us. But first of all, the most distinguished guest that we have here, if you all may join with me, if you are a spouse or a partner of one of our first responders, will you please stand? These women and men standing here before us are truly heroes in their own regard. The support that they give each of you and us, the raising of families they do when we are not around, helping others in their time of need and comforting us when we arrive home after a difficult shift and or a hard call are things we, take, we don't take for granted. Each of you are the reason we are able to do the job that we are called upon to do. The biggest motive of a firefighter, and EMT and paramedic is uh, to go home safe so that we can return home to you and our families who make us whole. Please join me in thanking each of you who are spouses and partners, our true heroes. I'd like to uh, recognize our retired members of the Spanish Fork Fire and EMS departments. If you are here tonight with us and are a retired member, will you please stand? If you're able to, Lynn. You did it. Those men and women who stood before you tonight have over 200 plus years of service to the city of Spanish Fork City. Pretty awesome. These women and men are, and many others that aren't here with us tonight are the reason why we wear our badge and be, are able to do the best job in the world. Each one of you have gave yourself throughout the years you served in saving lives and property, and I hope you know that we will never forget you, and you will all, we will always be indebted for your, to your service that you gave our community, and you are always welcome in our firehouse. I welcome each of you and your partners this evening, and I hope you enjoy yourselves. Please thank them again. Next, I'd like to thank our city council and our administrative staff from the city that are joining us this evening. Mayor Mike Menenhall and his wife Amber were unable to join us. Uh, they have a son's birthday party tonight. We have council member Chad Argyle and his wife Teresa who's unable to join us tonight. Council member Shane Marshall and his wife Carrie who are unable to be with us this evening. Council member Kevin Euler and his wife Angela. Council member Jesse Carden and his wife Kaylee. Councilwoman Stacy Beck and her husband Chris, they are unable, they are on a vacation to be with us. We have our administrator, Seth Perrins, and his wife Jill here in the front, and assistant city manager, Tyler Jacobson, and his wife Whitney. Thank you for being here. 
Please join me in thanking these incredible men and women for giving us the support that they have and, will continue, and that we will continue to need as our community grows and our fire and EMS services expand. Thank you guys for all of your support. My hope tonight is that as we sit at dinner that we can get to know each other better and build upon the camaraderie that already exists in our department. If you don't know someone, I encourage you to go and meet them and get to know them better. Active members, if you haven't gotten to know one of our retired members, please take the time to get to know them. They're the reason why we are who we are and what we do today. Before we break into dinner, I just want to take a moment and turn our attention over here to the right to a table set for one. We have lost two of our brothers uh, this last year, Rodney Warren and, and Marvin Banks. And throughout the years, many of, our mem who, many of our members have passed on as well. And this table is set for our members who are no longer with us, but also for all of the members that are no longer with us throughout this country that serve in the fire and EMS services. They've gone whether it was in the line of duty, whether because of age, cancer, or other circumstances. This table is set for them, and I am hopeful they can enjoy this evening with us if they so desire and choose to join us this evening. A table for one. The table is set for the many members of our professions who are missing from our midst this evening. To the community, they are firefighters, paramedics, and EMTs. To us, they're our brothers and sisters, which we are unable to be with this evening. Please allow me to share with you the symbol of the table that has been set for these fallen first responders. The white cloth symbolizes purity of their intention to respond to their department's call. The floral arrangements also tell a story. The red rose is for those who made the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives so that others could live. The white rose is for those who witnessed and experienced tragedy and destruction firsthand and are still with us today, you. The slice of lemon on the plate is to remind us of their bitter fate. The salt is on the plate symbolic of the tears shed by families and friends. And the candle is a beacon of light, a symbol of their memories that will keep burning in our hearts until the Lord unites us again. The glass is inverted because they cannot toast with us. The chair is empty, they are not here, but let's not forget them. We will now have a short ceremony to remember those who have gone before us and who are not with us this evening. Thank you, Vera, for uh, playing that song. It's, uh, it's always a touching song to be played in remembrance of our fallen brothers and sisters. <laughs> this evening during dinner, uh, we're going to have, we've asked uh, the Garden Valley Pipe Band to join us. As many of you may know, 
The bagpipes are a very uh, special part of the fire and EMS service, police services. And so we've asked the Garden Valley Pipe Band, who's a local band here in Utah County, if they would come and, and share some of their tunes with us this evening so that we can enjoy what the bagpipes and the tradition of it in the fire and EMS service. So if any of you would like free uh, lessons, the Garden Valley Pipe Band offers free lessons in Linden. And uh, I have their card and their information if anyone would like to, to try out the bagpipes. They're, they're always asking for more members to join and learn how to play the pipes. So anyways, please welcome Garden Valley Pipe Band.
We'll move into the next part of this so that we aren't here all night long. Um, I've asked our city manager, uh, Seth Perrins, to come up and uh, share a few thoughts with you this evening, and then I'll share some with you, and then we'll move into our awards. Thank you, Chief Hales. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, say a few words. I was given a strict three-minute maximum. Get your phones out. There we go. <laughs> Chief Hales hasn't been in some of my meetings. Uh, some of, many of you have been, so you know I can talk for a long time, and I apologize for that. Today, though, I just want to say uh, thank you. As I, as I thought about you and what, your, uh, what you do, um, it's always, of course, very inspiring and, and uh, very energizing and, and adrenaline running, and, and I think that's some of the reasons for which you do what you do, and I think that's great. Um, but as a resident, as a father, uh, as, as a husband, as a city manager, and all of those, in all of those capacities, tonight I felt really just to say thank you. Uh, for what you do and uh, for, for how well you do what you do. Through the years, it's been my opportunity to see many of you uh, perform your tasks uh, with such great care. I've talked about it in, in some settings, and, and I won't spend a lot of time here, but, but I just I marvel every time I roll up on a scene, whether it's uh, a garbage truck in a house this last year or or a house on fire, or, or, or a number of other circumstances. For, for my family this year, it was a little personal, and in about 11 months ago, I think it was, uh, some of you rolled up on, an, on a car accident uh, on 4th East and 2nd Southish, somewhere around there. I see a couple of heads nodding. You remember that when my daughter uh, called, or was hit by a, a car. That, if any of you haven't had the opportunity to receive a phone call from your child, that says, you know, with tears, Dad, I've been hit by a car. It changes you. It really does. And unfortunately, I have three daughters, all of whom drive, and all of whom have called me at different times in their driving careers with tears saying, Dad, I've been hit by a car. Every single time they've been in Spanish work, and every single time they've been cared for with such great care by each of you. Whether they get carried away like this one did in an ambulance with my granddaughter, that was extra scary for me and my wife. Or they've just had to have their car towed away and, and you've cleaned up after some of the mess that car made. Uh, how you do what you do matters. And how you do it with such care and kindness matters. And so again, as a father, as a husband, as a city manager, and as, as a resident, uh, today I just feel to say thank you for what you do. It's greatly appreciated and recognized uh, throughout this great community. Thank you. Thanks, Seth. How was the food? It was amazing. That was good food. Thanks to Myers Catering. Uh, they, uh, they're uh, just up north in the Salt Lake Valley. They do an incredible job and they support the fire service and we're grateful that they were able to give us some great food tonight to enjoy. So thank you guys back in the back. Uh, as I come up on uh, one year, it'll be one year that I've been here in March. Um, and I just want to express how grateful I am and my gratitude for all of you and for all of the support and your professionalism that you've showed me and welcomed me here to your fire family and EMS family here in Spanish Fork. Um, the professionalism is it's beyond words that I can express, that you guys have showed up, you've suited up, and you've delivered amazing services to our community. Over this last year, uh, we've implemented several changes, and a lot of those changes uh, have come at a price. Um, a lot of heartache, a lot of uh, disagreeing, uh, but they were all changes that we knew we needed to make, and you've stood by those, and you've supported them, and helping us provide a better service here for Spanish Fork City and the citizens that live here. Uh, change is difficult, but if we are not changing, we will become irrelevant, not only in our, irrelevant in our community, but also irrelevant in our state as fire and EMS providers. So change is good, 
and change is going to be consistent as we continue to move our services forward. And so as we, as we do that, your attitudes and your professionalism will need to continue in that support. And so, and you guys have already showed that you can, are capable of doing that and uh, it's, it's very well felt. I wanna share with you several of our accomplishments this year and all of these things couldn't have been done without you, but there's been so many things that we've accomplished in the year of 2022 up until the point that we're at today. And uh, so it's a long list. I'm gonna read them though, because it's, they're special. <clears throat> in January, our uh, city manager and city council uh, took it upon themselves to split public safety out from under a public safety director and uh, move Matt Johnson and put him over the police department and they hired me to come in and uh, to direct the fire and EMS department. We combined fire and EMS, which was separated underneath public safety under one uh, organization. We uh, placed our 2022 Rosenbauer engine into service and that took uh, a day and a half because of circumstances that were placed into, uh, because one of our engines went down due to an accident, and it took many, many hands to make that possible. So all of you that helped with that, you know who you are. That was a, an undertaking, and to do it in a day and a half was very impressive, and I, I, I couldn't be more thankful for that because that engine was needed at that time. Uh, we created a new fire and EMS patch and a new logo for our organization to resemble who we are and what we do on a daily basis. And that was done of having multiple uh, fire and EMS staff come together in a committee and uh, chip away on the drawing board until they came up with what we have now on our shoulders. Uh, fire and EMS started using all of the same software and uh, in staffing, training records, and reporting. We uh, took an undertaking on to, to bring a paramedic service to our city. Uh, we uh, did it in a shorter amount of time than I ever thought was possible. And uh, so we were able to obtain our paramedic license from the Utah Bureau of EMS in how many days was it? 40. Like 40 days. So I think that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, I didn't think it would be done that fast. We hired six paramedics and they started providing, they started providing services uh, in 24-7 uh, to our community July of 2022. In, December of 2022, we hired six more paramedics and they started delivering services. Uh, we're now down to five of those, uh, but they just started providing services 24 seven uh, just a couple weeks ago out of station 61. Uh, we took over the inner facility transports 100% out of Spanish Fork Hospital. Uh, this has increased our call volume as well as increased our revenue for our community and our department. We began staffing both of our ambulances out of both stations 24 seven, uh, which has decreased the workload on our staff and also uh, bettered our response times to our community. We hired chief, I don't know what's going on with this, but it doesn't like me. Uh, we hired uh, chief, deputy chief Krista Hording and uh, fire marshal Jason Turner. Uh, deputy chief Ryan Baum retired after 20 years of service to our uh, city. Assistant Chief Kenny Pruitt retired after 40 uh, plus years of service. Uh, Chief Brent Jarvis retired after 48 years of service. Firefighter Alan Moore retired after 31 years of service. And tonight we'll, we'll celebrate a, another retirement tonight uh, with Kay Thomas Perkins. And uh, we signed a contract with Utah County to start billing for ambulance services here in uh, the county areas. Uh, this was uh, a legislative action that took place last year uh, that allowed EMS to be an essential service provided to communities throughout the state of Utah. And because of that, those counties and cities and towns that did not have EMS services had a contract to have EMS provided in those communities. And so we were able now to charge for those services that we were providing for free for so long. We purchased and stocked all four ambulances in a squad with paramedic equipment and medications. Two ventilators were purchased, two IV pumps as, uh, for our critical care interfacility transports. We received four high flow nasal cannula machines for Utah Department of Health to assist in critical care transports for the interfacilities. We imp implemented first alarm stacks for all of our incident types within the city. 
Um, before these were implemented, it was a, a call. You had a call and a request a specific unit that you wanted. Uh, now those units are coming on a in first initial dispatch, and that's all handled through automatically through Central uh, 911. We hired 10 volunteer firefighters to fill vacant spots through it from attrition. We put nine of those members through the Utah Fire Rescue Academy Firefighter 1 and 2 and Hazmat Operations and Awareness. We started a peer support program and certified two members as our peer support team and brought on our <clears throat> Dr. Cottle uh, to head that team. And uh, he's now created a newsletters that go out every single month to help our members uh, to better their mental health. Uh, we ordered a new Pierce water tender. We received our new Fire and EMS UTV to replace our old Polaris UTV. We purchased two mobile housing units for Station 61 so that we can staff it full time with paramedics and EMTs. We purchased two paramedic squads and three administrative staff vehicles. We purchased 32 portable radios and 18 mobile radios to make our department P25 capable to meet the standards of UCA, the Utah Communications Authority for 2023. We implemented and updated our department policies and procedures. We created a new fire uh, crew staffing model that has just recently been adopted. You all are experiencing that and we're seeing how that is working. We rezoned automatic and mutual aid zones to get the closest units available for areas within the city when aid is requested. And we worked with our uh, ESCI, a third party company, to come in and develop a long range master plan for fire and EMS here in Spanish Fork City. And that will be done with a completed product in uh, March of this year. Captain Christina Reed was awarded as the employee of the quarter last year. Uh, our department started participating in the Utah County Fire Chief Sub Operations Committee, which is the committee that is uh, put together by all the county fire chiefs to set forth guidelines in, uh, in our fire uh, agencies throughout the county. And so we now have a representative, Chief Hording, on that. Uh, who represents us very well. Uh, Chief Hording was named as the Utah County EMS Council President for 2023. So it's an awesome thing to have people on, uh, on boards in our county so that they, we can have a voice from Spanish Fork and she fills that role as well. We implemented a fire fee schedule for our Fire Prevention Bureau, which allows us to bill for our fire inspections and to collect revenue on those inspections to uh, to support the, the work that's being done and the services that are being provided to those uh, citizens in our businesses. Uh, fire Marshal Turner started reviewing all development plans, construction plans, and fire aperture plans as, fire, as the Fire Prevention Bureau. We constructed two offices at Station 61 to accommodate growing and needed office space. Our volunteers conducted 40 plus public safety tours and events. We re-logoed all of the fire and EMS apparatus with our new department name and logo. And the biggest feat of all is we set a historical amount of calls for service to our community and we responded all together to 3,296 calls here in Spanish Fork City and our outlying county areas. So all of those things were accomplished because of all of you here in this room that are active and, and wear the uniform. We couldn't have done those things without you and we're gonna to continue to add to that list as we uh, move forward. I truly am grateful and blessed to serve alongside each of you as a staff, and I consider you the best in the state. We are moving and shaking, and the other organizations are watching us. The spotlight is on us. People are asking what, what's happening in Spanish Fork because of what, it, what we're doing. And so a lot of organizations across the state are watching what we're doing here, and they're very impressed by each one of you and the, the progress we're making and the, the model of uh, fire and EMS services that we're providing our, our city. I thank each of you for your service, for showing up, suiting up, asking, uh, doing what I ask you to do, and supporting the mission. To our spouses and partners, from the deepest part of me, I thank you for allowing your husband or wife to drop everything when the tones ring to aid, aid those that are in need when they call. We could not do it without your support. Uh, family's important. And we know that it's a sacrifice that you make every single day to know that your husband or wife carries a pager and that at those moments, unknown moments, no matter the time of day, they might just up and leave and then you're stuck doing what you need to do for the rest of the time that they're gone. So 
I appreciate that, and I know your uh, spouse and partners appreciate that as well. It is my continued hope as the fire chief of this organization to make sure that each one of your loved ones return to you safely after a call or after a shift. I give you my full-hearted uh, commitment to make that happen within all my power. We know that some things are inevitable and sometimes injury and death come upon first responders, but whatever, I, whatever power I have to not make that happen, I will make it happen as the fire chief of this organization so that they can come home to you. I love each and one of you as uh, first responders that I get to work with every single day. And uh, I'm just grateful to be a part of this organization and to see what progress we're going to make down the road. Thank you, thank you, and God bless. Um, If I could just have uh, Chief Hording and Jason come up. Um, our first uh, recognition I'd like to make tonight is uh, somebody that probably didn't uh, get recognized for the services that they provided this department in a, in a manner that they probably should have been. And uh, this during the, the moments of changes in the fire and EMS organization when uh, there were some leadership changes and some turmoil, uh, whatever you may call it, that was going on. Uh, our city manager uh, appointed uh, Tyler Jacobson as our interim director uh, to come in and to try to, to figure out what was going on, determine what was going good, what was going bad, and to try to implement some changes. Uh, Tyler was critical in helping make the department continue to operate and to create a culture uh, of change by implementing the anatomy of peace uh, model into the organization. Several of you read the anatomy of peace and I still feel like a lot of those principles uh, that were, were taught in that book and, and the implementation that Tyler uh, put forth from having all of you read that is still being used today. So uh, I, I see it every day that that culture of change and uh, growing together and learning about each other has just, has just help this department be a lot better and the morale to increase. Um, I would like to honor him today with a, a badge, uh, a badge of the Spanish Fork Fire and EMS for the department that he interimly ran and made better because of what he did. So Tyler, I'd like to recognize you with a, a badge of our, our department and uh, thank you for all that you did. Our next award uh, is a, uh, a Green Cross Award, which is not a department re award. And in, unfortunately, two of these members aren't with us today um, that received this award, uh, Boston Brewer and Z. Swayden. Uh, the Green Cross Award is an award from Hearst Extrication Tools. All of you are familiar with Hearst Extrication Tools. And uh, these two men were given this award due to an accident they responded to up on Highway 6. Uh, they were called to an accident uh, with a very critical patient that was trapped inside of a vehicle. And uh, on scene, it was very fortunate that this all happened at this, uh, the time it did uh, because one of the Hearst extrication experts that goes around the world and teaches firefighters how to extricate people from cars happened to be driving past as this accident occurred and, and, and watched it. And so he had all of his tools. He was just leaving a class that some of our personnel were actually attending in Salt Lake Valley. He had just left there and was heading back to his home going up over Highway 6. Witnesses this accident and he's a retired firefighter out of Santa Barbara, California. And he went to work like any first responder would that has tools in their car to help extricate somebody. So he goes to work. And our two firefighters, Boston and Z, showed up on scene and helped assist him with the Hearst extrication tools. Uh, that gentleman was awarded from Hearst as well with the Green Cross Award. And they also gave our two firefighters the Green Cross Award. So if you see them, uh, congratulate them. I'll get this award to Boston and, or, and uh, Z uh, as soon as I see them. So, but yeah, congratulations to them. What an awesome award to get from Hearst extrication tools.
So many of you have, uh, have heard me uh, talk about exceptional performance. And uh, it was something I came, uh, that came to me and a couple other agencies that I worked for, and I felt like it was a great tool and a great resource to bring to our organization as well. Uh, what we do day in and day out is in a job description. Uh, all of our things that we do and are expected to do are laid out in a job description, and, and, the, and we meet it. We, we come to work and we meet those expectations. Uh, exceptional performance, in, in my eyes, is a, a positive disciplinary action uh, that we can give to our members. Me being uh, the chief, I don't see everything that everybody does, and so getting your feedback on, hey, this person went above the call of duty to do something, uh, needs to be shared with the, the administrative staff and then we'll determine on if it meets an exceptional performance. Uh, the exceptional performances are then uh, written up. We recognize those, either, those individuals either at training or at a circumstance like this where we have two uh, that are, are needing to be given out and we felt like it was uh, no better place to do it than this evening. Uh, these go into their personnel files with human resources down at the city and, uh, and they get a little uh, gift card from the city as well for their going above and beyond. So the first one goes to uh, Kimberly Armstrong. If you want to come up, Kimberly. Um, Kim became the supply officer at a time of a tremendous change. First was the original retirement of long-serving Captain Don Thomas and new leadership. Uh, Kim threw out supply safe for preparedness. Um, there was a lot of stuff that was uh, overstocked that was just old and expiring that was just taking up a lot of supply room. So she went through to, to um, find out what was old and what couldn't be used and what we could still use and got rid of a lot of that stuff that we just weren't. There were army supplies from the 1970s and medical supplies from the 1990s that were still in that room. And so stuff that we just didn't have but we held on to and, and she went through and, and made those changes so that we could get what we needed in. She not only cleared out the supply room but also created categories, groups, and labels for the, the shelving so that people knew when they went into the room what the, the supplies they needed. Um, and this person that wrote this up was actually Jen, um, and she recognized Kimberly for this, and she just said, walking into the supply room after Kimberly was done, it just made sense. Finally, she formed a relationship with our suppliers and was able to plan ahead for all the new needs for our organization. She helped order new equipment, including the Lucas device, full body splints, hemostatic bandaging, CPAPs, and many other equipment upgrades. She helped order supplies to bridge us from a volunteered station to a paid station. And then we opened station 6-2 and she repeated that process all over to, sit, to get the stuff up at the uh, station 6-2 that we needed. And at this time, that's when COVID struck and there was a shortage of supplies everywhere due to shipping and other issues. Kim had been so organized and prepared that she was able to help surrounding agencies by selling them masks, gloves, and even needed medication that they were a weren't able to get, but we had on stock, so we were able to supply them with that through uh, an invoice, and they were able to pay us for those items. She had planned ahead and even endured some teasing about the amounts of items that she had purchased, but it was soon evident that during the pand pandemic, she predicted and organized in a way that saved us through what could have been a major hardship. With all the work that Kim has done behind the scene, she should not go unnoticed. Kim, the exceptional performance of what you're being recognized shows your professionalism and dedication to Spanish Fork Fire and EMS in our city and making it a better place to work and live. You're valued and we appreciate your willingness to go above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you. Council and staff, come on up. Uh, the next exceptional uh, performance award, this person uh, is going to be blindsided by this, but I'm glad he is because he's not one to be recognized. Um, but it's Eric Nilsson. And uh, Eric, you can come up and uh, be in the limelight for a minute. But uh, Eric went above the call of duty uh, on February 4th, just last weekend, 
Um, Eric was serving in, in the capacity of volunteering as our battalion chief uh, for the fire side of things. And uh, he stepped up during a very critical and emotional incident to take care of our on-duty EMS staff after they worked a uh, very tough uh, teen suicide incident. And uh, Eric went back to the station with the crews and made sure they were with, he was with them as they processed this difficult call. Uh, Eric, you, weren't, you were not only there for their emotional well-being, but you also remained there and helped cook their meal so they didn't have to and ate it alongside them so that you could just continue to be with them throughout that hard time. This act is something that you did not have to do, but because of who you are and the brotherhood that you have, you did it in a manner that was very impactful to others in a way that you probably will never know. But those members have shared it with me and I would uh, not, I, I, yeah, I don't think you know how much impact you had on those people that night. The exceptional performance that you're being recognized shows your professionalism and dedication to our city and our fire and EMS department, and you are a valued employee, and we appreciate going above the uh, call of duty. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I took the opportunity to, yesterday to actually go to the viewing of the, this young gentleman and convey to the family that our paramedics and EMS staff did everything we possibly could to save this gentleman's life, to give them a sense of comfort that they knew despite the hardship that they were currently facing and whatnot that I wanted them to just personally know that we did everything we could for them. And they were very appreciative, especially the siblings, that they were, had a better understanding that uh, we provided the highest level of service we possibly could from, to them. Thanks, Eric. Even one more thing that the quiet servant Eric does without anyone else knowing is showing up to a funeral like that. So. That's awesome to hear that. I did not know. These uh, next awards will be presented by uh, Chief Horning, and they are our service year uh, awards for our, our staff. All right, so we're going to start with uh, our five-year pins. When we call your name, go ahead and come on up, and we'll give you a pin and a certificate. So our first five-year pin is going to go to Blake Jenkins. Jenkins sorry. So come on up and get your pin. Where'd she go? Did she left? Okay, she left. She was here. Uh, must be present. <laughs> must be present. Um, so get a nice certificate and a pin that says five years. And then Rosa Scenario Santio, if she's here, she's not here either. Okay. Rosa, so congratulate these two when you see them. The 15 year pin is going to be Jared Chapel. No? Okay, <laughs> we'll keep going. I know this one's here. Um, 20 year pin is going to be Shannon Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> We have a second 20-year pin, which will be Eric Nilsson. <laughs> the next pin will be for 30 years in the fire service, Alan Moore. years is going to be Kay Thomas Perkins. Another 40-year pin for David Ellsworth. One more 40 years. This is like the biggest year rate bracket I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> 40 years is going to be Barbara Peterson Simpson. I don't think she's here either. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Give them a round of applause. Congratulate them when they get here. Okay, we have two for 45 years service. Uh, Kenny Pruitt, 45 years. A 
And then the last service pin is going to be for Chief Jarvis for 45 years. He actually served 48 years, but he wasn't able to make it tonight. So when, he, when you guys see him, be sure and congrat congratulate all of those people. Thank you. All right. We're flying through this part. That's awesome. All right, these next awards were actually nominated by and voted upon the peers, each one of you, of who should receive those awards. Uh, the first one that we'll recognize tonight is the Officer of the Year, which is uh, given and will be given annually to an officer of the rank of captain or above for their dedicated service and professionalism, embodying the duties of a public servant for the department. The criteria the members were given for the selection of this the award are they needed to demonstrate capability to work and lead under various assignments at an emergency scene, work well with others to focus on the overall goal and objective of the department, a willingness to devote extra hours to assure the department reaches its goals, a role model to other company officers. The recipient of this award uh, is Captain Kendall Young. So I Kendall stays up here. He's got this awesome plaque he can show you. And uh, it's got our department logo in brass on it. And, uh, and then recognizing him as the officer of the year. Uh, multiple messages were shared about Kendall and Kendall being a leader that shows up and asks people to do the things that he's willing to do alongside them. He comes to all of the calls. He's a great teacher and people enjoy following after Kendall. And so, well-deserved, and thank you for what you do. <laughs> These next two awards will be given annually to a member of our department for dedicated service and professionalism embodying the duties of a public servant to the department. Both of these are for firefighter, one of these is for firefighter of the year, and the other one is for EMS, uh, the EMS provider of the year and each of them have the same criteria for those. They demonstrate capability to work and follow leadership, initiative to take the department, station and platoon to a better place, superior performance at incident scenes and with non-emergency activities, and are a role model to other firefighters and EMS providers. This year's Firefighter of the Year that was chosen by each one of you, Cody Walmsley. And our EMS Provider of the Year, Mitchell Cowden. So uh, Mitch isn't with us tonight, but uh, just a couple things that were shared about uh, Cody. Cody is a, uh, is a doer. Um, he gets after it when he's here. He makes sure his, the trucks are clean, tools are, are taken care of. He's at the station, always trying to better it. Uh, he's a great leader for uh, his uh, firefighters that follow and, and work with his crews. Uh, and like I said, there's nobody that's going to do a better job than Cody Walmsley when he shows up. So when I see Cody, uh, as long as he's, as he's on the truck, I know work's going to get done. So well-deserved. Congratulations. <laughs> and then the next award is an award. Um, Chad, do you mind that uh, trophy right there behind you? Uh, with the uh, with the helmet and shield and axe, the tools of the trade, one would say, uh, is the Pride and Progress Award. Uh, I use the the city's logo and motto of uh, this award because it I think it's pretty powerful with the words it is. Uh, this award will be given to an active member of our organization and is selected by me and Chief Hording. The criteria for this award is a member who has excelled at their job and exemplifies the mission, vision, and values of the city and the department. Um, this uh, was selected, this individual was selected uh, by me and Chief Hording prior to their retirement announcement. That person and recipient of the, this year's first 
Pride and Progress Award goes to Chief Brent Jarvis for his 48 years that he's put into this place. He'll get this, uh, he'll get this to take home. <laughs> Chief Jarvis isn't able to be with us tonight. He wishes he could be. Uh, he's uh, dealing with some medical issues and uh, was not able to join us this evening. Uh, Brent, I will recognize him at his retirement on the 23rd with a few things, but when you run a truck and have that truck at your house for 16 straight years as the fire chief, the taxing mental exhaustion, physical exhaustion that it has on a person is, no one can even fathom it except for that man. Uh, there's not a fire chief in the state that has had a truck sitting in their driveway for as long as Chief Jarvis has and responding on every single call and listening to every single page and waking up for every single thing that this city experiences unless he's out of town. So just that in itself speaks highly of who Chief Jarvis is and his love and his dedication for the city and this department. So uh, we'll honor him at uh, his retirement on the 23rd, which I hope all of you will join. But what an incredible service that he has uh, given to the city. So thanks, Chief Jarvis. All right, now we would like to welcome up Taylor Banks. Um, I've asked Taylor to come and present this retirement uh, to Kay Thomas Perkins for her service since he knows Kay a lot better than I do. And uh, I wouldn't want to do a disservice to her and not share what she did for this city and this department. So Taylor's going to take it from here and share a few things about Kay. <laughs> All right, tonight is my pleasure uh, to be here to recognize and honor Kay Thomas Perkins, who I've been sitting next to all night. I'm sure she didn't know I was doing this. <laughs> she seems to be hiding a little bit. Um, I'm here to honor her incredible dedication and commitment to the city of Spanish Fork. Uh, for those new members, which there are many of you, uh, to our organization who may not know who she is, um, Kay served as an EMT for 40 years, as you guys saw tonight. She got her 40-year uh, pin. And in that time, she has been a friend, a mentor to many who have been fortunate enough to work alongside her. Uh, when I began in EMS in 2010, Kay's crew was the first I was placed on. She taught me the tricks of the trade, along with how to MacGyver out of sticky situations, as well as understanding that sometimes a hard approach is the best approach in order to effectively communicate a message to those we care for. Although her physical reach may be small, she has reached countless people and impacted countless lives with her compassion and commitment to helping others. Uh, Kay's dedication to her students, coworkers, friends, and family is admirable. She's touched so many lives with her caring spirit and dedication to her work, including her 30 plus years as an educator. I can personally attest to the impact Kay has had on my life. She taught me valuable lessons that I carry with me to this day. I'm so grateful to have the privilege of knowing such an amazing woman. She's kind, generous, and always has a smile on her face that brightens the room. She has the ability to make light of any situation and find the humor in it. Surely something that has brought joy and laughter to those around her. She has a quick wit, sharp tongue, and a unique view of life that always manages to make us smile. Her sense of humor has been a great source of warmth and comfort to us all. Her unwavering commitment to helping others, even in the toughest of times, is truly inspiring. She is, she is a role model for us all, and her presence has been sorely missed. I can only hope to be as generous and compassionate as she is. And I'd like to allow me to give a personal experience to further dive into who Kay is. And a lot of you guys know her well as I do. In the EMS field, one of the most common sayings that we often talk about is if it was your family, right? That's something we say, like, how would you present your family, right? Uh, the phrase is often used to emphasize the importance of providing the best care to all patients, regardless of their background, <clears throat> excuse me, or circumstances. The phrase also serves as a gentle reminder that we must never forget the importance of treating each patient with the same respect and attention that we would want given to our own family members. In 2019, 
I received a 5 a.m. call from my father expressing concern for my mother. My mother had been sick and in stage four renal failure for several years due to her battle with type one diabetes. On this morning, my mother suffered a hemorrhagic stroke. I informed my dad to call the ambulance. I quickly rushed over as well. The ambulance arrived and Kay was the one, one of the responding EMTs. Although down a member and only running as a pair since at the time we ran three to the crew, they quickly assessed the situation and packaged my mother for transport. I rode over to the hospital in the back of the ambulance due to the crew being shorthanded in the case that I could offer a helping hand. The time there with my dying mother was one of the most difficult emotional moments of my life. Although my emotions weren't displayed as tears, but rather shock, Kay responded with professionalism and a caring heart. She continued to inform my mother that I was there by her side until my mother ultimately slipped unconscious not to reawaken. Kay maintained her composure throughout the call and after the handoff, she slipped away from prying eyes and found a corner. In her solitude, she became very emotional, emotional, emotional about the call, and when I sought her out, I found her crying. She didn't know my mother, but she felt an enormous amount of empathy for me. In that moment of hardship, I had Kay to provide me with the love, empathy, and support that I desperately needed. Her presence was a reminder that I was not alone in that difficult time, and that she was there to help me through it. Her kind words, gentle touch, and caring nature provided me with a sense of comfort and peace that helped me cope with the grief and sadness. Kay's presence was a blessing and a true testament to her strength and her willingness to help others in their time of need. Kay's love for others and, and the Spanish Fork community is, is extraordinary. As expressed in the story, Kay has an immense capacity for empathy. She's able to deeply understand and empathize with struggles and emotions of others. She's able to listen without judgment and offer understanding and compassion in her responses. With her kind and generous nature, Kay is able to make those around her feel supported and appreciated. She's a true friend and an ally, always rallying around those in need and offering a shoulder to lean on. She's an, she is an inv invaluable asset to any group or team, and her empathy and kindness are truly remarkable. Kay, we are so thankful for your 40 years of contributions to the City of Spanish Fork. On behalf of our agency, I would like to express our sincerest gratitude for your dedicated and exemplary service. You have been a shining example of commitment and hard work and have a tremendous impact on, the, on our organization. Your dedication, enthusiasm, expertise have been key to our success and growth as an agency. And we are incredible, incredibly grateful for your tireless efforts. Thank you for being you and thank you for your hard work and dedication to the city and its residents. It has, it has not gone unnoticed. Your legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of those who have been lucky enough to know you. Thank you for all that you've done, and I'm honored to be the one to present this award to you tonight. Do you want to say anything? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I know you would. I know that's kind of different, but uh, you said change was hard. I'm telling you right now, retirement is the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> In fact, I don't know how I ever held on a job with the things I'm doing right now. So um, uh, change is good. I'm, I'm very impressed with the things that I'm seeing here tonight. Um, couldn't have asked for a better person to give me this award. Um, Taylor's the real deal, and uh, I have, I have loved, loved, loved serving the citizens of Spanish Fork and um, working with people, and I did get to deliver the first baby for Spanish Fork, and so I, I brag and tell people I've delivered seven children, two of my own, and you know, and they go, people that know me go, well, did you lose five? And I'm like, oh no, they weren't mine. <laughs> But uh, no, it's, it's just um, the friendships. I miss you, friends. And uh, thank you, I caught that. Um, I, I miss the friendships, but I'll be honest, I do not miss getting up at 2 in the morning to be an Uber. 
So, <laughs> but I have. I have loved serving the citizens of Spanish Fork, and uh, I still do, just in different ways. And thank you very much for this. I appreciate it. Forty years carrying a pager and serving and seeing some rewarding things like delivering babies and some very tragic things. And I'm sure you have 40 years of things that you wish your mind could forget what your eyes saw. And uh, so do many of us. Um, but please know we really do appreciate UK and what you did for the city. Uh, that concludes our banquet tonight. I hope you guys had an enjoyable time. But I also wanted to just thank those that helped make this happen tonight. It wouldn't have been possible without uh, our staff, Melissa Tucker, Eric Nilsson, Julie Pullman, Jessica Campbell, Christelle Horton, Nina Mortensen, Tyson Shepard, and Lydia James. Thanks for all of you for making this event happen. It's been amazing, and, and uh, we couldn't have done that and had this great night without you guys. So thank you. I just, got a, I just got told I'm not done yet. Um, but I also really want to quickly also thank uh, Woodland Hills Fire Department, Salem, and Mapleton uh, for staffing our calls tonight so that we weren't interrupted and that all of you could enjoy this evening. Enjoy your night, and thank you for coming out tonight. <laughs>